Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. March 2024 is a great time to build a gaming PC as parts remain historically low and we've got insane value. We've got three amazing builds for this episode. A $650 1440p gaming PC that has a GPU with 12 gigs of VRAM. We've also got a $900 and $1500 1440p 240Hz gaming PC and 4K 144Hz gaming PCs that are absolutely gonna knock your socks off. We'll also throw on some great value gaming monitors right now to complete your setup. If you get value out of this video, give it a like, it makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe, click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. Hey, with that, Let's jump into it. Before that, this video is sponsored by VIP SCD Key. Say goodbye to crazy expensive Windows 10 licenses and that terrible activate Windows 10 watermark. Right now, use the links in the video description, head over to VIP SCD Key, and get a Windows 10 Home or Pro OEM license for a great price. Pick your product license, then use the PC Builder discount code PC25 for an additional 25% off. Go to the activation settings on your PC, put in the code, and boom, you have a fully licensed Windows 10 for a crazy low price, which can be upgraded for free to Windows 11. Use the links in the video description below. Let's jump into that $650 1440p 60fps gaming PC. And this is with 12 gigs or more of VRAM, not a crappy eight gigabyte card. In 2024, you want to, as you're building a gaming PC, Number one, you wanna get the biggest, fastest GPU that you can, and then just get a CPU that won't bottleneck it, and you want to get to more than eight gigs of VRAM as quickly as possible. Right now, that's 12 and 16 gigabyte cards. We'll go over those in just a moment, but I finished out at $651.82. Prices kind of changed a little bit when I hit refresh a second ago. There's no like serious, crazy deals out there right now. You could pick any of these parts up. And in fact, some of the parts will go over, have alternatives if they're out of stock in your market. Everything is linked down in the video description. So check that out for current pricing and availability in your region. Obviously this is powered by the GPU. So let's talk about your choices. You actually have four, four different choices of GPUs. Let's go with the one that definitely hit, or I guess the two that definitely hit that $650 price point. The first one is the RTX 3060 12 gigabyte GPU, not the eight gigabyte one. That's totally different silicon and it's only got eight gigs of VRAM. You don't want that. You wanna get a 12 gigabyte RTX 3060. We'll go over the performance for all these in just a moment, but right now you can pick up like the white Asus Dual one over at Newegg, $289. They also have a Zotac card for like $280 currently back ordered. And then there's a number of cards that are right around that $300 price point as well. Just going up in terms of price, the next one up is the ARC A770 16 gigabyte card. The only thing I'll say about this, while it has some higher performance, we'll just see in a moment. The driver support, not quite there, not to the level of AMD or Nvidia right now. And there's still some games where you may have to troubleshoot. So it's not kind of a wide audience just yet in terms of my estimation. But if you want to give this a shot, you certainly can. And it's gotten a lot better. The other option I would really focus in on is the RX 7600 XT 16 gigabyte GPU. Well, as we'll see in a moment, way more performance than the RTX 3060 at 1440p. Comes with 16 gigs of VRAM. I don't think the 16 versus 12 is the big difference here. It's the just the speed of the card is, is the bigger difference at this performance level. But you can pick one of these cards up right now for $325 up to $330. Finally, if you're lucky enough to live in a market that you can still get the 6700 XT or 6750 XT, both 12 gigabyte GPUs, these are great values in the US right now, between $340 and $350. There's still a handful of them out there. It's still an insane value, 1440p GPU, and I'm gonna be very sorry to see them go. How much FPS can you expect from this build? Well, let's start off with the RTX 3060. Now, this is the RX 7600 XT review by TechSpot. So it's relatively fresh data. Now they've focused in on a lot of harder to run single player titles out there like Hogwarts Legacy at maximum details, things like that, Last of Us Part One at maximum details, not so much competitive shooters. Those are actually kind of difficult to benchmark, though they have like Halo and stuff like this in there. I'll leave it linked down in the video description so you can check it out and see the performance for yourself in the individual titles. But looking at their 12 game average here at 1440p, the RTX 3060 right at that 60 FPS mark, right at that 60 FPS mark, that's what I would expect. And again, if you're gonna play you know, CSGO or you're gonna play any of those kind of competitive shooters, you're gonna get way more FPS than that. Jumping up in terms of performance, the ARC A770, pretty good performance bump there to 63 average FPS, but the 7600 XT, 16 gigs of VRAM and no driver headaches basically, 67 average FPS. That's kind of the star of the show, but again, you're gonna get a little bit more expensive than $650. The RTX 3060, 12 gigabyte, still a very good GPU. And obviously if you can find one of those 6700 XTs and you've got a little bit more money to spend, 
that's the way to go. Look at that significant jump up there to 76 average FPS. And the 6750 XT is about 6% stronger than the 6700 XT. So you can expect even more FPS. Let's very quickly punch through the rest of the build because what we're looking for here is a CPU platform that's just not gonna bottleneck us. So we're gonna start off with the Ryzen 5 5500. Remember, this is no PCIe Gen 4 on it, only PCIe Gen 3, but you don't need Gen 4 for this level of build. And I'm gonna get your motherboard in just a second if you upgrade this path, and that's why I do like the Ryzen 5500 here because you'll be able to drop in like a 5700X 3D or 5800X 3D in the future and kind of have great performance. $89 right now is pretty insane. Your alternative obviously is the i3-1200F. If you want to go that direction instead, you certainly can. Upgrade path is also pretty decent. It's just those CPUs cost a little bit more than the, than the Ryzen ones do. For the motherboard, we're just going to go with the Gigabyte B550M DS3H. $89, it comes with Wi-Fi. I know that seems to be a little bit more important to folks who are on a tighter budget than others. Don't seem to be able, for whatever reason, to get those wired connections. This wireless, perfectly adequate to do just about everything on right now. And it's a great board. It's got BIOS flashback on it. Really fantastic little motherboard that can support that 5700X3 or 5800X3 d in the future and have PCIe Gen 4 on it. For the RAM, nothing special here. We're going to go DDR4 3200CL16. This is just a regular kit. If you want an RGB kit, they're like basically $10, $15 more. I'll leave a link to maybe one down in the video description so you can check that out. This is all the speed we need for a RAM, even with a future upgrade. For the drive, we're just going to go basically a 500 gigabyte SSD. Now, if you have a little bit more money, one terabyte SSD is go. Oh, they're like more like 60 bucks. Just a couple months ago, this would have gotten you one terabyte, but that's just not where we're at right now. Storage prices are going up. I know some of all oh, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. Just know if you wait, this storage price is probably going to double again. So it might be a good time to buy right now. And this is the kind of drive that I would look at. Again, if you have more like $60, this is one area where you can grab some more storage. For the case, I feel like a broken record bit Phoenix Nova mesh. These are phenomenal cases. The Deep Cool CC 360 ARGB, also great. The thing I like about these is they come with three included fans and they're not Molex or SATA power or something weird. These are PWM fans that actually plug into a header on your motherboard, fully controllable, as well as the ARGB is fully controllable. Uh, love this case. It's got great airflow to it. The fans, we've had a phenomenal build with our Ryzen 7600, 7800 XT. The fans are near silent most of the time, so two thumbs up here for $58. For the power supply, 550 watts is more than you need. The MSI Mag A550BN has kind of been my go-to here. It is fully C-tier rated on the PSU cultist list. It's really all you need. I will say if you go with like the 6700 XT or 6750 XT, I might click the button here to get the 650 watt version for $10 more. Just give you, or even if you just wanted to get that, just to give yourself some future breathing when you certainly can. It's only 10 bucks after all, but these units look great. So all told for $650 to up to $700, depending on the GPU that you're going to pull the trigger on, you're going to get a phenomenally performative gaming PC capable of playing all the latest titles right now at 1440p. At 1440p, you're not going to run out of VRAM. It's absolutely insane. It's going to look amazing too. It's got some really cool RGB on it. Gaming PCs right now are really tough to beat for the value at $651. Watch them for that $900, 1440 40p destroyer. Now, last month we did the $750 build, but what if you have more money to spend? You want even more 1440p performance, but you can't quite go over a thousand dollars. And I will say a thousand dollars is a tough price point because it's kind of $900 is really the dividing line between performance levels because you need to step up your CPU performance for those higher end graphics cards, but it's like $200 to jump from Ryzen 5000 to Ryzen 7000 or Ryzen 5000 to like 13, you know, i5 13600K or something like that. Let's go through why this build makes so much sense at $886. Let's start with where else the GPU. I ended up going with the RX 7700 XT with the recent reductions in the MSRP by AMD and the continued selling of the cards under MSRP. So basically that price has floated from like $440 down to about $410. Makes a big difference in terms of its performance. I still don't love 12 gigs of VRAM over $400, but it's close enough to 400 bucks that we can just kind of call it a wash. And honestly, I think 12 gigs at this level, you're gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay for sure on this. If you have some more money, I would, you know, we could take a look at jumping up. And that's the Sapphire Pulse RX 7700XC with the promo code 409. There's a couple other models similarly priced at $409 out there. The NVIDIA alternative right now is really the RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte. 
closer to $450. Yikes, it's so expensive out there, and I just don't get it because you're almost at the 7800 XT, and honestly, as we'll see in just a second, the performance of those GPUs just isn't on par. Speaking of performance, what can we expect at 1440p? So this is the tech spot RTX 4070 Super Review, but it's a different suite of games, at least in the, in the average here, than what we just looked at for the lower performing cards. In fact, it's a more brutal, more brutal single player, high graphical fidelity group of games here. You can see the R6700 XT down at the bottom. Instead of like 76 FPS, now it's down to 63. Again, it all depends on the suite of games. If you're gonna play single player titles out there, you're gonna pump out tons and tons of frames, even on the 6700 XT. But let's look at the 7700 XT, 79 average FPS in a pretty punishing, pretty punishing set of games. Again, link down in the video description if you wanna jump through the individual game data that they include in there and nice jump up over the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte GPU. Now there's an argument to be made, maybe you should go to the 7800 XT, but again, that's almost another $100. The issue becomes the CPU performance, the Ryzen 5000 and locked Intel 13th, 12th, and even 14th gen locked Intel CPUs, basically run into a wall right around the 7800 XT where you really do want to jump up to that next level of performance. So to me, this is maximum value. Let's jump through the rest of the platform. Honestly, we want price to performance when we're around $900. We'd love to go Ryzen 7000, too expensive. We'd love to go 13600K, too expensive at this, uh, to get a good GPU. So instead we're gonna go with the Ryzen 5600. It's gonna give us a small CPU bottleneck, but just a small CPU bottleneck. Obviously I wouldn't take the 5600 that much further than the 7700 XT. However, we are gonna have an upgrade path. We'll be able to drop in a 5700 X3D in two years time or a 5800 X3D in two years time and kind of go from there and grab a higher end GPU. But this is gonna give us an insanely performative CPU right now. Can go i5-12400F if you want, not as cost effective and equal performance. So I usually like the better value. For the cooler, you don't need to buy a cooler. The included stock cooler is absolutely all you need. However, better noise, better thermals on this. It looks cooler with the RGB. It's only $18. The SE214XT is a cooler that I absolutely love, but any three or four heat pipe cooler like this, a budget tower air cooler will do you fine. For the motherboard, you could certainly go with the DS3H B550AC that we just looked at but I do like the ASRock B550M Pro 4. Now it doesn't come with Wi-Fi on it, so that might be a deal breaker for some of you, but it does come with upgraded audio on it. Uh, it's got great VRM heat sinks. This is gonna be a great board to drop in a future upgrade like a 5700X3D or 5800X3D, and it's gonna be perfectly awesome for a Ryzen 5600 right now. For the RAM, look, 3200 CL16 is really all you need, especially as we're going up in terms of our resolution to 1440p. And I would say I love RGB, but the RGB kits are, they're getting fewer and further between, but I did find this one. This is the Oloi Owl kit. It's two by eight gigabytes, 3200 CL16, $40 for RGB. For the drive, let's get one terabyte and all the drives basically, we're just looking for the cheapest one. That's still good performance. The Kingston MV2 definitely meets that criteria. $60 is about what we're paying right now for one terabyte DRAMless drives. Fortunately, DRAM drives have just whew, skyrocketed in price and there's no real performance difference in terms of our gaming. So I just kind of warn you away, just spend that money somewhere else that's actually gonna increase your performance. For the case, I love the Antec NX410. It's got three included ARGB fans. Two of those are 140 mil. It's a full-size ATX case. That's why I picked this one out. And it's only $70. Got a great build quality to it as well. Two thumbs up. For the power supply, we've already talked about the MSI Mag A650BN in the previous build. Well, the 550, 650 is also a good unit here for $59. Now it's C tier rated. If you want to spend a little bit more money, jump up to like a B tier rated one, you can. The 750 watt units are more like $99 and those are typically B or A tier rated. So I'd steer you towards that. But if not, this is a really, really good value for $60. All told $886, you're getting an amazingly performative 1440p gaming PC that's absolutely just going to crush all the titles out there right now at super high frame rates, super high frame rates, even the single player hard to run titles out there at 1440p. And right now it's just an insane value. Let's quickly go through some great value. 1440p gaming monitors, honestly, the entry level 1440p is now essentially the mid range. You get the same level of performance. That's how much the prices have compressed in the monitor market in 2024. Let's go through my favorite one to recommend. That is the ASRock Phantom. I'm not going to say all those numbers and letters up there, but this 
This is a great curved VA, 27 inch, 165 hertz, 1440p, and it comes with a number of other really cool features. It comes with a Wi-Fi antenna, it comes with cool cable management to it. The color accuracy on this is pretty good. The contrast is excellent, and the motion handling is phenomenal. $179, you're really getting a discount here because ASRock is new to gaming monitors, and they're kind of fighting an uphill battle, so they're selling this at a steep discount. If you're looking for more flat IPS, the Acer Nitro XV272U V3 has been our constant go-to since last year. This is a phenomenally performing panel, 180 hertz refresh rate, $220 for amazing goodness. MSI has also got some good price cuts right now on their MSI G274 QPFQD. I hate these names, but I love the performance. 170 hertz, effectively the same monitor as the previous one that we just looked at in everything. Maybe slightly brighter, slightly brighter, but honestly, you probably couldn't tell the difference between these two if I took the labels off on them. $220 if you want this as an alternative. Let's remember that $1,500, 1440p, 240 hertz, or honestly, 4K, 1 40 ports gaming destroyer and i will say i finished out right now at fourteen hundred ninety eight dollars and 28 cents this is the same build right here that you see a very similar build that i have that i'm using absolutely crush crush hell divers too i love that game at 4k 144 hertz i play on the gigabyte m28u i'm getting tons of frames at 4k i would crush it at 1440p so if you're looking for super high performance this is definitely it let's jump into what else the gpu i'm going to give you two different options here depending on your preference for AMD or NVIDIA or your preference for money or not as much money. Honestly, the not as much money actually performs better in terms of rasterization. That's the RX 7900 XT continues, at least in the US, to sell at $699. Listen, if you live in a different market where the NVIDIA option sells for less, get that one. I mean, just let's just be smart about this, right? But the Sapphire Pulse, uh, there's a number of other units that have also dropped to $699. Just pick these up. These are really, really good performance GPUs. I have the Power Color Hellhound one. That one's selling for a little bit more right now. I wouldn't necessarily spend extra money to get the color Power Color Hellhound over something like this. Just grab the cheapest one and you're going to have a great time. The other option here for you, you NVIDIA folks out there is the RTX 4070 Ti Super, especially if you're going to play at 4K, then DLSS makes more sense at 4K. Ray tracing, this is a card that's probably kind of the entry level full on ray tracing card out there as well. So if that's something that's important to you, these are good GPUs. You can find these at $799. It's $100 more, and they're selling at the MSRP. That is, they got the Gigabyte one, the Zotac one, the PNY. If you're looking for some of the other more name brand ones like MSI and stuff, I will warn you, it's, it's kind of like 50 bucks more. But hey, it is what it is. $50 is not a ton more to spend. I'm not going to act like it's a huge imposition because you could get the Asus Tough Gaming one for right, right now for $839. Great performer as well. Let's talk about performance. This is rasterization performance at 1440p. This is TechSpot's 4070 Ti Super Review. So again, fresh data, relatively fresh data. You can see the 7900 XT. Yeah, it definitely outpaces the 4070 Ti Super. And in anything, especially 1440p rasterization, this is the direction I would go. Now it does even pull ahead even more at 4K. But again, if you're looking for those NVIDIA features, if you absolutely want to have DLSS, they're close enough to me that you can really kind of just pick, pick your poison here. Either one, very, very viable. And I have said many times, I do like the 4070 Ti Super. I also like the new, new price cuts on the 7900 XT. You really can't go wrong. Let's jump through the rest of the platform. Honestly, for this level of GPU performance, we definitely need to go with a next gen platform, either Ryzen 7000, or we need to go with an unlocked i5-13600K, i5-14600K, or higher end CPU on the Intel side. Those are kind of prohibitively expensive once you factor in the cooling, the fact that the CPUs cost a ton more, the motherboards cost a ton more. So uh, the Ryzen 7600, if you're primarily gaming, honestly, even if you're doing creative workloads, this is a great CPU too. If you're primarily gaming, this is the way to go. Could consider a 7800X3D here for another $150, but then you need more cooling with that, so it's more like $200. So just factor that in. If you have like an extra 200 bucks and you want to spend it there, that this is one place you might want to dump it in. But this is a highly performative CPU and it doesn't matter between the 7600X and the 7600. Right now the 7600X is selling for less, so that's the one you should get. For the cooler, a simple budget tower air cooler is fine for the Ryzen 7600 or 7600X. Thermorite Assassin X120 Refined SE RGB. This Thermorite, do you really have to make the names all this complicated? It's a simple budget tower air cooler with an RGB fan that's a good performer. Two thumbs up, $19. This is all you need. You can look 
look at more cooling if you want here. You could even look at liquid cooling if you want to get a little bit more fancy in terms of the aesthetics, but this is all you need in terms of the performance. For the motherboard, I did go a little more fancy here. I, I know when I've been recommending Ryzen 7000 builds, I've been recommending a lot of micro ATX motherboards. They're just so cost effective right now, and nobody ever uses those extra PCIe slots, but I know some of you out there want ATX. So I like this board. This is the MSI uh, B650 Gaming Plus Wi-Fi. There's also like the Gigabyte Eagle board out there that's an, a new one that they just introduced as a lower cost full ATX size motherboard for gaming purposes. $169 comes with a number of M.2 slots, comes with kind of basic audio, basic everything else. But again, if you're looking for a nice full-size ATX motherboard with Wi-Fi, this is a good choice. The RAM, look at this, silicon power coming in and adding some more competitions to the DDR5 group. Now I have been recommending the team group kit for quite a while out there, but this is another good kit here. Silicon power, DDR5, 32 gigabytes, 6,000 CL. 30 on it, and it's got RGB. Honestly, not much more here that you need for $99. For the drive, we're gonna go with two terabytes here. I just think at this price point, it makes sense, especially given the fact that storage is actually going up in terms of cost. If you feel like you don't need two terabytes, you could certainly go with one terabyte, but you can see the cost difference here. This disk drive, the Team Group MP33, the one terabyte version costs $60, and this costs $105, so it's only $45 for the second terabyte. So to me, it does make some sense out there. And as insane as it sounds, four terabyte drives are actually pretty good value right now, even compared to the two terabyte ones. So check that out depending on how much storage you need, but I like this one. Man, when I saw this case on sale, the Sky 2 Montec, this is just an absolutely phenomenal, awesome looking case. It's that atrium style case with the side intake. It comes with four included ARGB fans. You can mount water cooling in this. It's got great airflow to it. For $79, that is just totally bonkers. It also comes in white, comes in blue as well. If those are colors that interest you, or if you want to do more of a theme build, but honestly, 80 bucks, I would buy this in a heartbeat. For the power supply, I want A tier rated. Now this build, because we're using that uh, 7900 XT, does require 850 watts. It's right on the line between like 750 and 850. So I just decided let's get 850. It's not that much more. The thermal take top power GFA3 is an A tier rated unit fully modular and it's PCIe 5.0 and ATX 3.0. So if you do go with the NVIDIA GPU instead, this has your connector for it. So two thumbs up there, $104. So for $1,498, you are getting an insanely performative 1440p or 4K destroyer. The same PC basically that I'm using right now in Helldivers 2 and having an absolute blast at super high frame rates and killing that game, which I absolutely love. And I hope you'll love it too. Let's jump through some great 240 Hertz, 1440p game yards and then we'll also do some 4K gaming monitors as well. Honestly, I still love the AOC CQ27G3Z. This is a curved VA panel, very reminiscent of the Samsung Odyssey G7 in terms of its motion handling, in terms of its response times. I really, really do like it, especially if you're looking for something with a high level of contrast, which I think really helps in those competitive shooters out there. $300 right now over at Amazon. Of course, right now we've got a flash sale going on a flat IPS 1440p, 240 hertz. If you didn't watch our best gaming monitor 2024 video, I'll leave it linked down in the video description. I basically said there's like four or five of these panels that are almost identical in terms of their feature set. And I would honestly go with the cheaper one. And right now this is it. This is the HP Omen 27 QS. It's got great motion handling to it, 27 inch. It's flat, it's IPS. It's kind of everything that you wanted in a 240 hertz gaming monitor. And it's 299 right now. Checking it with some 4K options out there. Honestly, I really do like the MSI Mag 274 UPF. It's the 27 inch version. A lot of these, when they first came out, the 4K 144 Mars, they were 4K 28 inches, but now they're going with a 27 inch variant. And honestly, the price has come down to an insane 399 right now. If you're still looking for that 28 inch to get that extra inch for only 50 bucks more, you can get the Acer Predator XB283K. Now they've overclocked this slightly to 150 Hertz from 144. It's not that big a deal, but it's a great gaming monitor. It looks amazing. All these, both these gaming monitors for 4K come with HDMI 2.1. If you're also interested in console, you can hook those up as well and get your full 120 Hertz at 4K. Remember, all the parts are linked down in the video description. So check that out for pricing and availability in your region. And of course, if you got value out of this video, give it a like. This makes a huge difference to the channel. It really, really does. And of course, subscribe. Click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. Speaking of cool content, did you check out our GPU price update for March 2024? It's right here. We go through all the latest GPUs. What's the right one for you right now? Check it out and we'll catch you.
on the next one.